obviously, you know, even when you're posting me, it's great and all that. But I see a lot of young guns, man, who should get a lot of, like, they should get more coverage. Not just when that they get to the top that they are eventually going to get there. Just, you know, now, I think, think like the new generation, rather than all the top guys, all these MMA sites and all of us should focus on these these storms coming through. Do you know what I mean? That's just my thinking. Definitely, I agree. And honestly, we love hearing what you guys actually want to see because that's what we're here for, Darren. Of course, of course. Of course. Yes, PNMA. But I do have to say, when it comes to the interview with Jake Paul, I mean, the reason we cut it is because the host of this right now, he did Mm. interview him. So I'm just saying. Come on. If he didn't do it, we wouldn't have posted it. You know what I mean? Tessa, let's just get it straight. Ariel will sell his soul for any kind of interview. He's a <laughs> That's sellout. such BS. He's what are you talking snake? about? He's a snake. No, Come on, wow. Baby. Wow. You know, you know the type of person I am, and I know what you're like. You know, true colors, man. You, you're a snake, Ariel. <laughs> 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 you know I've got love for you, Ariel. Yes, Come on, of course. Me. Of course. Um, Darren, who is someone in the UFC that doesn't get enough attention that you think that this is, uh, this is criminal? <sighs> that you want the ESPN MMA account to talk about more, to shine a light on more. Who's in the UFC right now? I think I know who you're going to say. I'm actually going to say Leon. Oh. I mean, he hasn't fought since July 2019. I actually think that the hiatus has made him into a bigger star. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because a lot of people, like, 50% will hate him, 50% will, you know, obviously. On... Who did you think I was going to say? Aspinall. No, Aspinall, he's, he's getting the love area. Right. I'm not. I'm not worried about Aspinall. And the thing about Aspinall is, I'm, I'm so happy the way his mind works. It's not like he's trying to rush for anything. Or like I can tell you, here and now, he's been offered massive fights, and he's just like, he's just going with the flow. He's just training hard. He's just happy with what he's doing. You know, he's comfortable. He's made a bit of money for his family. I mean, he's just a humble lad. He hasn't got like flash cars or anything like this. He's just going with the flow. He's going to be a massive star. He knows himself, which is really cool when a guy is like that, when they, they know who they are. Who should he fight next? It's tough, man, because the ever heavyweight is like not as stacked. So, you know, if whoever he gets, it's probably going to fire him straight up to the top 10, top 5, isn't it? And, you know, that's where the real battles start. You know, you've got all them, them top 5s are just monsters. So, it's tough, especially, you know, he's He's on a th- thing. I don't know if he's on a three fight contract. So you know he's got to he's got to play smart. He's got to play it smart to his benefits. I I suggested Chris Dawkins, the the young man who fought on the same card as him, but a lot of people didn't like that because they were like, uh, don't put two, you know, yeah. prospects. Yeah, I I do agree to some extent, but I do disagree because I think let them fight maybe down the road because that Chris mm-hmm. he's he's very good as well, but. I was thinking someone like you know like an Overeem or something, but then obviously the UFC mm. cut him and. You know, because over him, was, I know, man, he was, he was still beating guys. You know what I mean? It wasn't like. Are you surprised was... about that? I mean, when your time comes, here, your time comes. Look what they've done. I mean, over him was fighting before I was even born. But, <laughs> no. What are you like, talking about? He was. He was fucking. Over him, must... he's got to be like 65 or something now. He's got <laughs> to be. But I don't know, man. It... I think they should have given them like a tribute or something. They just cut them and that was that. I know. Not even a tweet. Not even a, a thank yeah. you for your, your time. Uh, we're like, we mm. wish you the best. Like, give us something. This is why you just have to make money and leave your mark in this sport, man. Well, that's why I don't begrudge the fighters who try to, you know, like a D- Dustin Poirier right now. They're having trouble making the Connor fight. Dustin Poirier deserves a payday. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... When you compare it to boxing, it's it's insane. It's it's a tough subject, man, because the UFC do completely look after us. But at the same breath, when you see these boxers getting what they get, and you think, oh, you know, we should be getting a little bit of the pie as well. Just the guy the who fought, he deserves a massive payday now, doesn't he? Yeah, like the guy who fought Canelo a couple of weeks ago. I don't even remember his name, and he made like two point five million. Mate, a gust of wind would have blew him over. <laughs> come on, come on, like come on, mate. I'm sat here selling coats to pay me to pay me car, me monthlies on me cars, and that man's making two point five mil. Crazy, there, lad. Come on. What do you think of Eddie now? You guys cool? Eddie Hearn. 
he's all right, Eddie. Listen, he is what he is. Ariel, he's just you know, he's a clever man. He's a clever, he's a clever boxing promoter. You know, we're cool. Obviously, we're cool. But I just like to throw hate unnecessarily, don't I, Ariel? That's what I do. That's my thing, mate. That's my thing. Uh, so you actually said Leon is the guy. That was kind of a bad answer, if I'm being honest. Mm, I don't know. I, I would like to see Leon get, get more it love would be than nice. he gets. Okay, so let me ask you. He wins. Do you do the Colby fight? Do you try to make that happen? Or do you put him You know, do you, do you put him in line for the title shot? Just wait for the winner of Michael <sighs> Usman? Yeah, I don't know. It's This is the thing with that, that little hi, hiatus now. Like, Colby... As much as an amazing fighter he is, he also seems like a hard person to be able to work with. Like, he doesn't take fights. Not that he's scared, he just doesn't take fights just to be awkward or whatever it's to do with. And, I don't know, Masvidal's a big star now. I don't know if he's in the gym every day, so is he training as hard? Is he is he waiting out? You know, it's, it's tough. It's very tough. Yeah. It's tough. Colby just seems seems to like bitch now about the fights, but he's a great fighter. He could just fight them all, and he'd probably win most of them. You know, who I have a lot of respect for RDA. This guy wants to fight anyone. Like he has fought yeah. prospects, yeah. he has fought legends, he has fought champions. Of course, he's fought contenders. Like you never hear. I'm I'm getting tired of welterweights. They just all want to pick and choose the perfect yeah. opportunity, the perfect time. Yeah. It's a little bit frustrating. Like if it's down to money, I get it. But if it's just down to yeah. like the perfect opponent on the perfect day when the sun is pointing the perfect direction, it gets to be a little much. No, yeah, it, and you know what? That is perfect. Like 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 me, I've never when when I see Marvin beat Jack straight away, straight away I messaged his uh, manager Ali. I was like, come on, me and Marvin fight, and I've done the same with Gaslam and when. I moved up to middleweight and Dana was like, are you sure you want that fight till he's just nearly, you know, killed is he? You know, come on, you take take it slowly. And I was like, no, I want to fight the best. And you've got to fight the best. And RDA is calling out, in my opinion, the future lightweight champion, Islam. Like, yep. his fight last week was just, I've never seen pressure like that in my whole entire career. Like, wow, he's a beast. And then the seeing your man DC saying that he would probably be Khabib in the wrestling. Like, so how fucking good is this guy? But, the problem is Islam needs to stay active, man. He doesn't fight enough. Right. K- Khabib, to be fair, Khabib didn't fight enough. Like I know there's this argument now with Khabib and John, who's the GOAT, and it's tough to say because obviously John's had a lot of things outside the octagon, but that's outside. Inside, John is the fucking man. No, ma- no matter what anyone says, he's had how many title defences? No one's even come close to taking it off him. And in them last few fights in the light heavyweight, he wasn't nearly getting beat. He was just fucking bored because there was no competition there. I don't disagree, but the PD thing is an issue, right? It is a big issue. I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm like Michael Bisping the way he says about it. As soon as the guy starts taking PDs, his whole career should be tarnished because you're basically cheating, man. You, you, everything, everything becomes easier. Weight cutting, dieting, training, recovery. You're a cheater. So that's the only thing that maybe might stop him from being in the argument as the GOAT. Uh, are you watching right now? No, me telly oh. froze. Your telly froze. Your boy David Grant got a big win. TKO. My guy. What happened? My... What, what happened with... T- your TV. I don't pay me bills, Ariel. What happened with yours? I'm not... <laughs> so what, are you streaming this right now? Uh, yeah, Ariel, stop trying to grasp Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Stop I'm trying sorry. to get back in Dana's good books, mate. I have spoke no. to Dana. He hates you. I know oh, he does. Can you no, can you put in a word? Who to Dana? Yeah, that's not my argument, Ariel. Unfortunately, mm. I put in a good word for you. By the way, you know this. That's the difference between me and you. No, Ariel, come on, son, come on, <laughs> come on, come on. Uh, what about Hamza? A bit awkward, right? I mean, it's crazy because I don't know, man. Like, I don't, I just don't know anymore. Like, I actually thought. I don't know. I don't know where to, what to say about about it. Like, because when he starts talking about the tyrant, he must have really, really been bad with COVID. So that's not going to go away as easy as he thinks. So I don't know, man. I mean, he's definitely he's definitely a fucking terrific fighter. There's no doubt about it. How good he is, we don't know. Yeah, but just when he was talking about retirement, I was thinking, wow, like his head must really be fucked from this uh, COVID. 
No, I know, but it's just weird for him to say, like, I need a break or I'm going to retire, whatever. And then everyone comes out and is like, nah, he's not really going to retire. We'll yeah, see him in it's, June. Like, it's like he's being pushed. Like, yes. Was he, was he having us? Uh, I don't know, like, the president of Russia rang him up. Who's the guy who rang him up? No, the big the, the, yeah, Ramzan Kadyrov. He's like a mad dictator, isn't he? <laughs> Stop. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yes. I mean, he, he is gets very, a lot of hate, doesn't he? He is very controversial, to put it uh, mildly. Well, yeah. Aren't we all, Ariel? Come on. No, I mean, this is a different level of controversy. This is uh, this is bad. This is not a couple memes on Twitter. Is it not? No. No, it's a little more than that. I'll have to look into that guy. Uh, maybe not. You don't have to, but yes. Yeah. I mean, I would educate my. He is actually very involved in MMA, which is a little bit, a little bit yeah. concerning. Yeah. Mm, and Mark, he jumped on the phone to Kamzat. Yeah, and then he posted that he spoke to him and that we're all good and he's gonna fight for the people, the Chechen people, and it was just the whole <laughs> thing was just like, hey, you know, it's okay to support him behind the scenes and say we're there, but it just felt like. A lot of influential people were very quick to say, no, 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 nothing to see here. He's going to be okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all. But he's incredible. Okay, let me ask you this. Who has a higher ceiling, him or Islam? What do you mean? Like, ultimately, who has the better career? Kamzat will have the better career because he fights regularly. He wants to fight. I mean, as much as Islam probably trains every day, he doesn't fight that much. Like, listen, Khabib, man, what, inside and outside the octagon, an absolute inspiration, but he, he didn't fight enough. Mm. Like, myself, I, like, this year I've promised myself three fights if it's possible. Like, I, I only had one fight last year. Like, that's not enough. Like, you know, when you want to be the best man, you look at Canelo. Canelo's like fucking three yeah. fights in how how many months that's the way to do it yeah yeah he that's, fought in december then february now he's fighting again in may that's just the way to do it man and like you know some guys can get away with like going away for a long time they really can and khabib got away with that because he you know he was so good but islam if he wants to like if you're talking about him and comes that comes that wants to fight all the time so he will have the better career now i don't know whether islam just stays undefeated like khabib and then you know, obviously gets the belt and whatever, but he's got to fight more. He's definitely got to fight more. Now, do you feel it's because of his style or just because he's fighting more? Because they have... Not- I mean, Hamzad probably has a little bit better striking than Islam right now, or at least what we've seen. Yeah, I, do you know what? I think it could be down to training. I think it could be the old just overtraining too much, getting injured, mm-hmm. like... I've I've had Friday today and tomorrow off because my coach was just like that, and we need we need a few days off here. You you're overtraining, like because we 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 train hard in the gym, and I think when you do that over time, injuries don't get better, and uh, they set in, they stay there, and you struggle all your life with them. So maybe that could be the point why why I mean it's not a negative thing, but that could be the reason why Islam is not regularly fighting. What do you think of? Um, oh, they're what they're showing. Did you? Are you watching this? Can you still see it or no? No, it's you, my tell is oh, completely. Jesus, um, Max Holloway saying he doesn't spar anymore. You know what? I keep using that example to all the guys now. Like, not to blow my own trumpet area, but we've sort of run out of spot. We've got a few good sparring partners in, but we we did run out of a few sparring partners. Uh, in the gym because they were just getting they were getting hurt not to be like not to be cocky or anything or confident but that's what was happening and with the way you see Max Holloway do that for five rounds with no sparring mm. and was he training like over Zoom or some shit I was thinking nah that's well, gotta be he, a lie <laughs> well he said that before the last fight the Volkanovski fight I don't know if he was pulling our leg this time he said he actually trained with people there's footage of him mm. but for the second straight fight he's saying uh, no uh, no sparring I mean, Cowboys said it. All these guys said, I think you get to a level area where you you sort of learnt a lot of what you need to know. And then I think sparring just becomes one of them things that is not the most necessary thing. You don't need to take these punishing spars or, you know, because every sparring session, you know, if you, if you go hard, let's say like we do, you know, your legs are getting low, you know, kicked. You get a need, you know, you're on the ground, you're wrestling, and 
it's heavy. Like on Tuesday we did we did I think we did A fives and it was brutal, man. And then on, on Thursday we took it down, we done five fives. Like you gotta remember, A fives of just pure sparring, that takes its toll on the body oh. no matter what else you do. In MMA, this is not boxing, this is not anything else, this is MMA, all the arts mixed together. So I think when you're younger, yeah. But I think as you start getting on and not getting on, but you know when you've like you're at the peak and you've learnt a lot and you you know you're the, you're an elite fighter. I think sparring become should become the last resort. I'm sort of I'm on the same wavelength as Max. Wow. So like for this fight, how many rounds do you think you'll spar? I've sparred a hell of a lot. Like I've been <laughs> I know I know I'm like I'm like absolutely chatting shit here because a lot of people <laughs> but I've sparred a lot, but We've had days where maybe the sparring partner hasn't been able to turn up, you know, because he's probably, you know, he's it's it's been a bit tough or whatever. So there's days we've missed where we wouldn't usually miss, you know, like through a camp. So even though I've sparred a lot, I haven't sparred maybe as much as other fights for other fights. And as my coach even said the same, he said, you just don't need it as much as maybe when you're like 20, 22, you know, you, you know stuff like that. As a UFC fighter, do you think you'll ever go into a fight without sparring one round? No, never. I, I do. I, I like to spar for my own head. But what I mean is, if I go into a fight and I, like, I've only done, let's say, let's say just overall 20, you know, 30 rounds of sparring, I'll, I'll be okay as well. Whereas usually, you know, over like, let's say, a 15 week camp, let's say you spar three times a week and you're doing. Let's say maximum of six rounds. That's six, twelve, eighteen times eighteen by fifteen. That's a lot of rounds, Ariel. Yes. So, and w- when do you stop? Sorry. When do you stop sparring? Like how? How far? I personally advance? like sparring even the week of the fight. Really? Like yeah, because what there always... like when you're at the city, like in Las Vegas. Well, whatever I would be like. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I I sparred the week of Wonderboy fight. I sparred the week of. Well, that explains uh, it. The Woodley fight, uh, I sparred the week of most fights. The only f- week I, like I did... how you mentioned the two losses. Did I mention the two losses? Well, you mentioned Wonder Boy and Woodley. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's not like Liverpool going to win at all. Wonder Boy, Wonder Boy <laughs> got played at his own game. Come on, son. He got took to school like Gaslam, and then Woodley and Masvidal took me to school. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, like. I, I've always found as well sparring the week of the fight is better for my head. It keeps me, like my brain active. So like if you're obviously ever weight cutting, you know, people will do things, they'll run, they'll go on the bike, they'll uh, hit pads. I like to spar and keep like a flowy state of sparring, sweat loads and uh, it keeps the brain active. Not obviously as tough as what you're doing the, the previous weeks on, but I do like to spar the week of the fight. Give us, give us like a, a, a great or not so great weight cutting story. Like a nightmare weight cutting story. How bad great, did it get? Great weight cutting story for me was the Whitaker fight. Uh, I didn't even cut weight. I, I ran in the morning and was just at one eighty five. I even I I made sure I came out holding a can of Pepsi in front of Rob, and he was looking at me like you fucking <laughs> you fucking bastard. So, but uh, I know everyone's seen the footage of the Wonderboy wake up, but I would say the Masvidal wake up was probably harder because I went blind walking to the shops trying to get that last point one. Come on, of it, yeah, I went blind, man. Like I just shouldn't have been doing that wake up no more. Like I've, and I don't give excuses. Obviously, that f- he, he fucking beat me fair and square. But I remember on the day of the fight, I just, I just didn't feel like I'd recovered my health enough, like I needed to. Like I've, you know, like the water loss on the brain and all stuff like that. Like tough them weight weight cuts to welterweight man. So so you you went blind on the way to the gym. No, so the morning of the weight the weigh-ins uh-huh. in London, there was like a supermarket, you know, like a Walmart, like five ten minutes away from from where we were staying. And I woke up at well, obviously I didn't wake up because you don't go to sleep. I I was awake at like six o'clock, and I I snuck out my room and like was walking there to to like try and shed the last. Point one, point two, and I had to call Colin like on the way there, like because I had to sit down. I was like completely blind, blade, and Colin like ran to get me. Can you hear me? Hello. 
Hello? Hello? Hello, Ariel. I've got you, Darren, but I think uh, Ariel's thing crashed. Oh, he's he's got no Wi-Fi. He hasn't paid his bills. Yeah, collapsed, Ariel. I was I was blind, man. I couldn't I couldn't move. Yeah, I'm here, mate. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Yeah, so am I. So am I. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I can hear you, you baldy nugget. What? Hello? We're on a delay. Are we on a delay? When I say yes, you say yes. Yes. Oh, okay. We're good. So, okay. so, so you, wow, that's crazy. Okay, we're good. Okay, I want to play a game with you, Darren, here. Um, I'm going to tell you the promotion. You tell me who you fought, okay? Okay. MMA Sanda Combat. Midnight, Laeche, Midnight Costa. Wow. Uh, Laeche, <laughs> wow. <laughs> what the hell is MMA Sanda Combat? That was like an organization in Brazil. Uh, a lot of a lot of good fighters for it. actually went on to like the UFC and that were fighting for the belt, the, uh, the welterweight belt. And I took it off Laeche. Uh, he was How the many champion. People? How many people there? Uh, I think like 5,000, something like that. That was the one that got you to the UFC? Was it? Yeah, that was the one. Yeah. I knocked, what, what, that, what, that was a five-round fight. I knocked him out in the fourth. Yep. What year? What year? Uh, that will have been 2015. Yes, sir. What about um, Sparta MMA 6? Sparta MMA 6. That will have been in either 2013 or 2014. But I fought on a few of them, so you're gonna to have to be more specific. Yeah, well, that's why I said six. I wanted to know if you can you can nail it. I'll, okay, I'll give you the date. Maybe that will help you. May twenty eighth, two thousand thirteen. May twenty eighth, two thousand thirteen. You've got me, Ariel. I cannot remember. But it was uh, first round knockout, minute twenty four. Ooh, smoking them hands. I can't remember the name. <laughs> Paulo Batista. Oh, Paolo Batista, yeah. I bought a board there, the guy. You remember it? Yeah, I remember it, yeah. Any? <laughs> uh, what about, okay, what about this one? Encontro dos Espartanos. <sighs> You've got me again. Yeah, because you, you, you really bounced around in the early days there in Brazil, huh? Yeah, I thought I was on just like a warpath, man. Why did you go to Brazil initially? Just to train or was there another reason? Basically, this guy uh, was sort of like stalking me. And one night I woke up and he was trying to like molest me, Ariel. So I had to get out of the country. It was it was bad. Come on, be honest. <laughs> What are you talking about? Like he raped me. He bummed me. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Why did you go there? I got stabbed. <laughs> is that better? Is, is that the truth? That's the truth. I was just, I was just like fucking, you know, mad little kid, you know, just on a war path on the streets as well. Just like, I don't know, man, just like, fucking, just as you do, mate, just a bit, a bit mad and then, you know, obviously, I got stabbed up twice. And then, you know, me coaching that was like, listen, a few things are going to happen. You're going to go out for revenge or you're going to go out. You're going to go to jail. You're going to get killed. You're going to kill someone, this this and that. He was like, what do you want from this life? And I was like, the same what I've always wanted. I wanted to be a champion in the UFC. I want to be the best. And he was like, well, you need to go to Brazil, son. And I was like, this is a trick question. When? And he said, next Saturday. Oh. And I had a lot of the way now, so much trust in Colin that I went. And uh, did he go with you? No. He, he, uh, we had the guy out there, Marcelo Brigadero, very respected black belt. Uh, he had Team Carbon in Brazil because he lived in, in, in England for five years previous. And, uh, you know, he welcomed me with open arms. 
why why Brazil? Is it because he had the connection there? Like, why not some? Yeah, he had the connection, and I think okay. he just knew the type of place it was. You go there, and it's sort of like savage, as to say. And uh, what what do you think happens if you don't go? I just think there was so much distraction at that oh, point. Oh, do you well, see that? You see that? Danny Gay just knocked out Gavin Tucker in like thirty seconds. Wow, he said he was going to do that. Great win for Danny Gay. Sorry like, to interrupt. Yeah, Dan's a good guy. He's a nice. He's a nice lad. He's yeah. Ali's assistant. What does that mean? I mean, he works for him, but he's he not works? managed by him. It's a. It's a bit of a weird one. Is it? Yeah. Anyway, MTK, MTK is the number one management. Anyway, that's what that's what that's what they say on the internet. <laughs> Don't <laughs> start throwing smoke. <laughs> <at MTK, anyway. laughs> um, <Them>, so, <laughs> like 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 Kamzat's boss, them war leaders. <laughs> so wait, wait a second. Um, what do you think happens if you stay home? I just think at that point, Ariel. Even though I was, I've always been very focused on the gym, attentive and and all and things and whatever. Uh, there was just so much distraction and, and another another distraction to make money as well. Obviously, I wasn't making money and fighting at that time. So, you know, who knows what I would have got up to, Ariel. So, I think it was... I mean, I was only meant to go for six months as well. Like, that was the initial initial thing. And then, obviously, when I got there, you know, done a little bit of raw dogging and now I have a seven-year-old daughter. <laughs> uh, so, you were there, what, what are we, uh, four? I'm, re- I'm trying to figure it out. Four years, three years? So... I mean, it sticks in my mind so much, the dates and everything from Brazil. So I landed on Brazil on the 24th of December, 2019. And Damn. I left I left exactly, exactly 24th of, two, of December, 2016. So four years to the day. Wow. Did you do that on purpose? No, I just don't like flying with people. So I like flying alone and Christmas is usually quiet. Wow. And... Uh... Why did like when you left? Obviously, you come back, you go see your family. But when you left, why didn't you just wait for Christmas to be over and then go the next day? Because in my mind, I wanted to be there, ready to train, smash me way through Christmas, just for the new year of two thousand seventeen, just to smash into it all. Okay. Mm, so yeah, it was a weird one, like going there. No, no, like when you went there in two thousand thirteen, you left. Oh no, two thousand twelve. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? It's actually a funny story. So Colin was like, you know, go and, go and get your bits of money, what you've got in, you know, take as much cash as you can. So I was like, you know, I took a little wad of cash and uh, the, the, a friend, a friend of mine helped me with the flight and uh, he was like, he sorted the flight on a credit card and that was for like to go like the 21st or something or the 19th and when I got to the airport the credit card hadn't been accepted so my flight hadn't even been booked so wow. I had to come back rebook it uh, I had to put like the money in the account rebook it for the for the 23rd 24th I think it was the 23rd going into the 24th and uh, that was it and you didn't see your family for that whole stretch no wow why didn't you go home? Like, why? Like oh in the yeah, middle? I did. I came home in 2015 for uh, oh. four weeks and uh, okay. seeing like I only came back to see see Colin really just to check in, and then I came back. And and he didn't go visit you over there. No, he didn't need to. He he knew I was fine. Wow, interesting. And where did you live? Here, there, and everywhere, wherever I could. At first, I lived in the favelas for a while. At first, I had this Come apartment. On. Yeah, I did. At first, I lived in this apartment, and then we moved where all the guys were, and like the gym, where the gym was based, like just outside of the favelas. Then we went and lived there. There was like rats were living with us, and that it was called Kafofo, and uh, and then I moved again and again, and then obviously the you know the girl I was with at the time got pregnant, so we had to move in somewhere. Uh, it was like sort of a what did they call them in a motel. And then yeah. uh, that was it. And then obviously we split and I went to live with a friend. And then uh, I was out for like 16 months with shoulder surgery. And I just, I was like, right, I feel like I've, I feel like I've out, outstayed me well in Brazil. Now it's time to go back. So I just messaged Colin and Colin was like, right, time to get back and get back to real work, son. You've, uh, you've done all you needed to do in Brazil. And I was like, okay, wow. I'll see you soon. 
Um, how how is it in the uh, the favela? Do you know what? It's it's Brazil's a mad place. Like it's beautiful. It's the same as any other country. It's not like poor like people think, but at the same time, it's ruthless. It's like completely and utterly ruthless. Like the way them favelas operate and, and stuff like that is like on a whole nother level. Did you ever get in trouble there? A few times. Uh, the oh. the film the film that comes out will tell all that. Which film? Uh, there'll be a film about me, Ariel. Come on, there's got to be. Is someone following you or something? Like Connor? Connor? No, like, you know, like, a, like there will be oh, a film. Oh, you mean and... like, a, like a motion picture? Like an, yeah, like the... an unscripted, wow. Yeah, there'll be a film. Brett Okamoto wants to take it from you, Ariel. You don't have to fight him for it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's great wow so mm-hmm. so, how many times did you get arrested there twice wow twice huh what are the mm-hmm. what are the jails in Brazil like <laughs> so <laughs> mate <laughs> my uh, my boom got pre- penetrated a few times stop stop <laughs> rank the jails that you've been to from worst to best the worst was Tenerife mate no comparison where, where where's that when I got arrested for the taxi. Oh, Can- Canary Islands? Yeah, that was the worst. Why, why was it? I feel like that would be the best. It's like a, it's no, a resort. That why? Was, like, <laughs> the scariest jail. Like, I remember, like, when we was there, we was there for, like, four or five days locked up, and I remember I made friends with, like, the, the, the head honcho, the head chief of police, and, like, he was bringing me smoothies and little chickens and rices and that, and I remember, like, what... He was off duty and one of the guys wouldn't let me go to toilet and I was in the cell with my friend and I was like, mate, I've got to take a shit. And he was like, lad, don't you dare take a shit. Lad, don't you dare. We were arguing back and forth. So when he went to sleep, I got the tray where I'd been eating the chicken and rice and I just had the shit in the corner and it stayed there for the whole four days. Ariel, it stunk. <laughs> oh my God. That it is was... crazy. Darren, you, you, at this point, you're, you're a famous UFC fighter. Yeah. Do you have a moment where you're saying to yourself, I can't believe this is happening to me? No, I just have that moment that I'm human. And <laughs> that's that's just the end of it. That until it's human. I'm not one of these guys that say, yeah, man, I'm I'm humble. I'm cool. I'm down to earth. Because people who say that know that secretly they're not humble. I don't right. need to say that. I'm just a human, that until. Wow. So that was the worst by far. That was just uncomparable, man. That was... <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking that trip never again uh, what did they give you to eat so like that guy who I made friends with he he looked after me and uh, but when he was off duty it was just like these dry crackers and like this little carton of like milk it was fucking disgusting oh my god for four yeah. days you were there yeah four days man it was, you know, it was funny, like, but it wasn't funny when Colin got a hold of me and absolutely oh, killed no. me. Uh, what, what did he do? He just battered me. He was just like, you little fucking cunt. <laughs> and obviously, he's the only one that can do that. I was like, I'm sorry, Colin. I was like, <laughs> I don't know why I did it. You know, I lost me fight to Masvidal. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he's like, you little gobshite. You know, we're fucking trying to be the best in your fucking robbing taxis. And I was like, Colin, I'm so sorry. He's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And he's got like all these samurais in the gym. And I kept looking at them just thinking, oh my God, he's about to stab me with the samurai. <laughs> just ran out the gym. And I was with my friend and he was like, go with him and just sort your head out, you little cunt. And I was like, stop, I'm sorry, Carl. Uh, where did there's you real, take the taxi? There's a real, I'll tell you, there's a real, uh, it is a master student, obviously outside the gym, big brother, little brother, father thing with Colin. But he is a complete and utter master. He is like the the guy out of Kill Bill, you know, Pi Mate. That is exactly yeah, yeah. who he is. But I didn't steal the taxi aerial, no. I was the passenger. Where'd you guys take it? So basically, we when we, we like, well, I say we, when we absolutely destroyed this hotel, like, and I mean destroyed, it was a five star. We all ran up the road with our suitcases. And when we were loading our suitcases into this taxi, my my friend jumped in the driver's side, but which he thought was the passenger's side, obviously, because in England, we drive on the other side. So I was in the back and I said, what are you doing? He went, oh, I thought this was the passenger. And I went, it's not, get out. And he went, ah, fuck it, shut the door. 
put the car oh. in, into gear and just absolutely smoke this car around the Canary Islands. And I was just in the back going, I'm a UFC fighter, lad. Don't <laughs> stop the car. <laughs> yeah, right. You 100% drove it. No, I never did. You know, I'd tell you never did. I never, I swear to God. <laughs> Why were you in the Canary Islands? Just vacation? It was two friends' birthdays, and actually, Colin was telling me not to go. Colin was like, "If you go till you know what you're like, you like, you, you know, you, you you loose, you wild, you know, don't go." I said, "No, it'll be fine. Colin, we're only there for a few days. I'll be on my best behavior." So I think that's what made Colin even more upset that he actually told me. And then, like, when we got there, like, I was getting mobbed by loads of people, and I didn't know how fucking like well known I was on the islands, and like the people were buying me drinks and everything. And it was just a bit mad. And it was a blur, to be honest with you, Ariel. It was, uh, it was a blur. It was. And that's the last time. Yeah, I, I ain't allowed to go back. Really? Yeah, man. Fuck that shit. Banned by who? Fucking Judge Meatball, I call him. <laughs> this big meatball looking judge. Fuck, don't say that. Don't say that. Yeah. At least he didn't make you go back. So, so you've been in Canary Islands, in England, and in Brazil. Anywhere else? In the Slammer. In the slammer, yeah. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Brazil, <laughs> Canary Islands, England, and that's about it, my friend. Uh, I don't believe you. You're laughing. You're leaving. No. Out. <laughs> a, I think I'm trying to remember my days in Thailand. I don't know. Oh, I was gosh. fucking. I was a bit mad then. So, so after after Canary Islands, is Brazil worse or England worse? In what sense? In, in jails? Yeah. I think they all have the same, the same elements, Ariel. You know, but... I mean, Brazil's so crazy because Brazil is so big. And then on the outskirts of Brazil, you have, like, Colombia, Peru, Argentina. Yeah. You have all, like, these countries where, like, not to say lawless, but they're just very, very savage. As much as it's beautiful and the people are so amazing, it's a very savage way, I'd say, Brazil is probably like one of the most savage countries in the world wow and so, where in um where in england there's a few in england i don't know if you've heard of a guy called uh, charles bronson yes yeah he's locked up in i think it's broadmoor that's meant to be rough as fuck so uh, the one in liverpool or walton jail that's rough as well yeah. I think, By the way, I think they're all rough. Yeah, I think yeah, they're yeah. all rough, Ariel. The, the time uh, when you tried to get to New York, how stressful was that? Exactly like it is now. What do you mean? Stressful like it is now. Right, but now, I mean. Now it's fine, but still, just because of COVID, it <clears> slowed things yeah. down a bit. Now, obviously, I've, I've got it, the application, everything, everything sorted, but. It's oh, just, for your fights, you're, you're having issues coming. Um, I was regardless. No, okay. I, I, yeah, no, because it was one of these things. Until I actually got the actual visa, it was going to be a problem. Like with the Gaslam one, it was only a temp visa. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, now, obviously, you know, I've resolved. That I've got all me, me, me criminal records is what they ultimately wanted. Uh, but it was. Do you know what? It was actually better for me. I like work better when like. Everything I, f- I feel like everything's against me, like you know, because the weight cut for that was fucking so tough, man, because of the plane ride and everything. So I came in like heavy. Uh, you know, I don't know if anyone cares to look, but the way I looked for Gaslam and Whitaker's two totally different guys. Like I was, I was huge for Gaslam because I'd cut so much weight and put it back on. Uh, but do you know what? It was just another thing that you can say, right? You know, look at look at what we done. We went to London. We was there all week in London till Thursday and then we flew to Madison Square Garden, the biggest fighting stadium in the world and fought one of the best guys in the world and beat him. So it's, you know, it's a good story to tell the grandkids, Ariel, and I'm sure it'll yeah. be remembered. And you almost didn't get to the fight. Remember, they, what was it because Trump was there and like the Secret Service didn't let you do your SADA test? Yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember Trump like, casu- casually walking past <laughs> uh, the, where, where, where we was. In the day, like where the USADA, the USADA thing was right at the front gates, and I was the last guy sat there. Uh, Kevin Lee had just like walked out, uh, so yeah, he he just walked out. Kevin Lee, 
he was mumbling something like about he's got the tools to be Khabib. I can't remember what he was saying. <laughs> so uh, I was sat there and then the woman left. So I was there on my own. And then these two like big guys come in were like looking at me funny. And I didn't know who they were. And I was like, who the fuck are you looking at? And they were like, yeah, yeah, this is a, this is a fucking secure area, some shit like that. Yeah, uh, you got to stay in here now, you know, until we've all cleared out. And I was like, what do you, what do you mean, mate? And he was like, what a third man. He's like talking like some mad shit. And I was like, all right, mate, yeah. And then there was this big kerfuffle with USADA and the, like the secret service or whatever. Like this guy has to stay in this room. He can't leave. We've secured the area and shit. And I'm looking on the television and there's fights getting made and Gaslam's like knocking all these guys out and then Masvidal's knocking me out. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a fucking blur. What's going on? I was like, and I was already really nervous. And I was like, well, maybe this is my out not to fight. Do you know what? I was like, yeah, no problem. I'll stay in here, mate. That's fine. <laughs> and then like the girl was like, okay, we'll do his test in another room real quick and that. And then like I walked into Colin and everyone knew and everyone was like, what the fuck happened then? And I was like, dude, was trying to not let me fight in that. And Colin was just shaking his head. He was so pissed by the whole situation. I mean, I would assume at some point the UFC was going to come help you out, right? Yeah, but it was just the way, like, listen, Eddie, you know, fucking hell, but, you know, I'm a man. I'm president. Not, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not afraid of no guy, but you got these crazy Secret Service guys coming in. Like, these are next level. These aren't, like, yeah. or anything. these are the president's fucking security, and they're, like, looking at you. And, you know, you're thinking, what the fucking hell is going on here? Like, these are the main men. These run the world. These guys. And they're saying, yeah, he's not fighting. He's got to stay in this room. I was thinking, they're, they're like the bosses. Dana's not the boss. You sad is <laughs> That's not true. the boss. So it was quite scary, to be totally honest with you, Ariel. Did you speak to Trump? He, there was it. There was like a mad moment when we was in London. <laughs> and I'm sure he jumped on like this three-way call and I heard his voice. And I, and I was like... Fuck, is that Trump? I was thinking, oh, I might say something to the cunt. But <laughs> I feel I, like there's a chance if 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 Donald Trump is not the president, you don't get that visa. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. Dana came up to me at the weigh-ins and was like, you know, the way he is, he's like, you don't know how many strings I had to pull. And I was like, oh, I'm I'm sorry, Baldy, come on, mate, you know. <laughs> and he's like. I do believe him when he said this, he had to write a quite few checks for me to get there. So this is the thing, you know, we all, you know, we can all throw hate at Dana and, oh, the pay's not good enough, but people don't see a lot of stuff what goes on behind the scenes, you know, with other things they do. Like, boxers don't get treated well uh, as good as we get treated on fight week, you know, with the hotels and shit like that. Like, no mm-hmm. way. So, you know, it's sort of divided, but at the same time, yeah, of course the pay is the most important thing for us to survive and live and enjoy the fruits of our labour. But, you know, Dana does a lot of things behind the scenes that people don't know about. Have you seen the new uniform? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Well, how'd you see it? Oh, come on, Ariel. Can you send me a couple of pics? Can I post them? (laughs) Come on, Ariel. (laughs) Okay, what do you think? I mean, the only thing I think is that it's a bit shitty that we just can't have our own sponsors. Yeah, of course. You know, like, I think now the way my name is in, obviously, the UFC, but just even in England, you know, I've got a big presence and a big name. I could be getting some serious sponsors. So, so that's, like, maybe a little bit shitty, but, you know, I see what they're doing. They're trying to make it a company thing and all that, but it just seems weird. Like, I don't know if this is me thinking, but Reebok to Venom, it seems like a come down, not a way a step up mm. like you'd expect maybe adidas or under armor or nike i don't, I don't know it's, it's it's a it's a mad one the deal must be good that's all is it say. is it is it like is it unique does it have color does it have personality is it just kind of say that's my problem i don't want all of you guys to look the same right like yeah that's that's what that's what's fun about fighting you all have personalities well, you're unique i actually said to the guy who works for me at raw dog i actually said to him i said our dream, let's make it our goal now to get Raw Dog, like, the official sponsor of Stop. Jesse one, one day. Like, you why imagine. can't I, Ariel? Tell me <laughs> no, why I mean. not. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a legitimate thing, man. People buy into it and, you know, we've already made, you know, not bad money. We're doing well, so why can't I do it? Okay, why don't you sponsor your fight? Why don't you get it on the, the mat like Connor does? <sighs> I can't afford that, Ariel. Come on, mate. That's that's expensive. 
you really think you don't think they'd give you a deal? It's your fight. Mm. You should ask. Do you know what? I will ask. Yeah, I'll, I'll Tom, be cheeky. Call up Dana. Say I was talking to my mate Ariel. He had a great idea. ABC. Let's get the logo. Yeah, but as soon as I mention your name, Ariel, <laughs> all hope of getting a sponsor goes out the window. <laughs> How did you start that? Which? The the company. Raw Dog. Yeah, like how did you actually start yeah, well, it? You know, you know where Raw Dog came from, obviously, don't you? You know, the petty story. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I think a lot of people just hadn't heard it said or whatever, and a lot of people just bought into it. And then a lot of guys like who obviously work with me and for me and that were like messaging and saying, you need to start up like a brand, a company, T-shirts, whatever. And at first I was like, yeah, whatever. And then when I was out in Dubai, uh, seeing me management after my, my fight with Whitaker, the guy who works for me on, on uh, Dad and Till store messaged me and he was like, listen, we need to release a T-shirt. Like, think of some ideas because this is going to be huge. And I was like, mm, okay. So that night, I remember I, I had a few drinks with my girlfriend and uh, I was she was asleep and I was sat in the, like where we, we had a desk, you know, in the hotel room. And I just started yeah. like writing down some ideas and I thought, how do I do what I've always wanted to do? Be different. like Because in everything, I just want to be different. I don't want to be the same. This is why I don't say the same shit and I'm not the same shit. And I'm, I'm always wanting to just divide myself. And I thought, we don't want to just bring out these T-shirts like every other fighter. Yeah, go get my T-shirt, man. Use code, whatever, you know, 10% off. Because I just think that's all baloney. So I said, I said to uh, the guy, I said, listen, why don't we do like a seven days limited edition t-shirt never gets released ever again mm. and just give people seven days to buy it. And he was like, that might work. And it fucking worked when I brought the post out and then uploaded the link and whatever. Like it was just amazing. Like it was completely and utterly amazing. Like how many sold and the limited edition. And then I was like, right, not coming back. And then people were like, bring something else out so we brought like a beanie out and then we brought a, a jumper out and then we then this brewery approached me and we're like we want to do beer raw dog beer that's the two things that go hand in hand people drinking beer and people wanting to have sex we want to do it and i was like let's do something then so is the beer a real thing the beer is gonna listen the, the beer is gonna be fucking huge i've just got to get past a few le legal side of things and Lower the price. I think the price is a little bit too too expensive right now. But the beer is a real thing. Uh, we lowered it to because it was quite special beer. We lowered it to like I don't know, like two fifty a can, which is still quite expensive. So we're trying to get it lower now. Uh, What's so special about it? It's fucking it's that until raw dog beer, mate. That's what's so special about it. What's so is there like special ingredients? Shop? I don't know. Are there special ingredients? Yeah, just you know, you, you have one sip, and every girl automatically wants to have sex with you. I mean, it's it's, it. it's crazy. It's great. <laughs> yeah. So you'll be able to go into like a, a store or something and get this eventually. Well, lockdown has really, really slowed yeah. down area. Like, you know, I've got a few businesses. I've tried to keep clever and whatever, but. I just think until lockdown's over, I can't say about any. And I know a few few places want to sell it and uh, actually get it on draft, you know, like pints and that. But, I mean, no one's saying anything because a lot of people are, like, losing businesses and losing money and getting laid off from work. So it's not the time to be, like, doing stuff like that. It's the time to be reserving cash and stuff like that. It's, it's a tough time people are going through. Yeah, you're telling me. You're not going through tough times. Your YouTube must be flying. Just you having me on here is making you money. No, like, by the way, it's, it's not making me a penny. How am I making money off this? One hundred percent. Every time you speak to me, you make a million pounds. I wish. I wish. <laughs> but there is. I mean, you know the people like Chael. Chael's killing it on YouTube. Chael has his own YouTube channel. The ones. I mean, I think Chael, it's really smart. Chael just yeah. Utter, Chael just utters shite. He just talks bollocks. <laughs> but he's still killing it. Yeah, he is killing it. To be fair. But but you know you should I know you uploaded that one video but you can make serious money off YouTube well, you can make hundreds it. of thousands of dollars of course money. and everyone said it but same thing again for everyone you know who's interested listening it's 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 gonna be done my way like Ariel I'm being honest with you now I could have made absolute millions off my Instagram I really could have 
but I've scared sponsors away and sponsors have been attracted the way I am and it's sort of 50-50 but I'm going to do it my way always and you know at the start I had people like trying to influence me and I, you know sometimes your mind gets a little bit twisted towards it but now it's it's me I'm the boss and it's going to be done my way same with like my YouTube thing you know I just come up with it one day opinions and assholes I'll just sit there I'll put the camera in my face and I'll speak and you know what Ariel people absolutely love it because it's not they like do. I'm in a studio or anything yeah I will try to make it a little bit more professional but it's literally just me I sit there I don't edit anything and I just upload the video. That is literally all it is. It's great. That's what people want. They don't really care. Honestly, what the Ariel. pandemic has taught me over the past year is that they just want the stuff. Ariel. Yeah, it's great if you can make it nice, but they just yeah, want the stuff. Of course. Professionalism, all that stuff. People just want to listen. They don't really give a fuck. They really don't. By the way, uh, another quick knockout here. Ryan Spahn just beat uh, Misha Serkinov in like a minute. Your, your telly's still not working, huh? I'm in the other room. So you're not even going to watch Leon? I'm going to watch Leon, but right now I'm, I'm enjoying my chat with you. I'm enjoying it too. Yeah. What time is it there? Is it, oh wait, do you guys have a daylight savings? You do, but it didn't kick in yet. What's daylight savings? Like when you put the clocks ahead? Is that tonight, is it? That's tonight in America, but I think it's in a couple of weeks. I think you guys are a few weeks ahead of us. Um, or after us in, in uh, the UK. But tonight at 2 a.m., we go to 3 a.m. There is no 2 a.m. So where where are you right now? I'm in America. Yeah, I know you're in America. Right? Whereabouts? Oh, New York. So what time is it there? 10, a, 10 p.m. 10 p.m.? Yeah. It's 3 in the morning here. Right. So then at 3 a.m., my time, we will be. You will be four hours ahead. Okay. But then at some point, you guys catch up, and it becomes five hours. You know what I'm saying? I like it. It's spring forward, fall back. You get it? Mm, yeah. You get it's it? Pr- pretty boring conversation. Here. <laughs> Lots of people are logging off. <laughs> really? Did we lose them there? Yeah, you you lose people when you talk, talk bollocks. That's why Chell <laughs> loses everyone because he talks lots of shit. Are you are you are you beefing with Chell right now? Let's get them back. I, I, you know what? You've just said a name, and I thought, yeah, let's get some beef on. I've never beefed with yeah. Chell, but yeah, if he wants that, you can get it. What? Well, what's wrong with him? Too much no, shite. You just talk shite. That's what's <laughs> wrong with him. <laughs> Doesn't know what he's talking about. Pretends like he knows. Ariel, come about. on! You know I beef with absolutely everyone, and no I know. one will do nothing about it. <laughs> I'll go through the names. Chell, tell me what annoys you about him. Talk bollocks. <laughs> uh, Connor, what annoys you about him? Do you know what? I actually feel sorry for Connor right now because he's getting wrote off by so many people. Like, in the past, I would have been like, you know, saying shit, but I want him to do the underdog comeback now. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. all for the underdog always. So, but I think he, the, the thing that annoys me about Connor right now is I think he's just living too much of a good life. I think when, when you wake up and You've got a million dollar watch on your wrist. It's hard to motivate yourself to train. It's it, I I do believe, by the way, it was uh, the late great Marvin Hagler who said, "It's hard to wake up and pound the yeah. pavement when you're sleeping in satin sheets." Yeah, yeah. And Connor Ben says it now. You know, Connor Ben. Yep, yep, yep. Obviously, Nigel, Nigel Ben. ben. Yeah. Connor Ben is one of our sponsors, athletes with my watch brand. He's a He's a sound fucking lad. Uh, and he, he says the same thing, but he says it in a light like this. He says, I still wake up in silk pajamas and I'm still out working these fools, which I like. <laughs> I like that. Because obviously, you know, his dad is is obviously made a lot of money and give provided us some of a great life. But Connor Ben, man, he puts the work in and he says, I'm driving around in Maid Rovers and I'm still out working these fools. So I love that. Have you ever met Chris Eubank, senior? No. No, what? I'm not, really? I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of Chris Eubank Jr. I just. I don't know what it is. He's just got this sort of unlikability, and I shouldn't say that because I don't know him. But his dad. His dad is a comedian. His dad's amazing. Incredible. What a voice. And an amazing fighter, by the way. Yeah, legend. I suppose I'm biased with Chris Eubank Jr. because he, him and Billy Joe, you know, beef a lot, and Billy Joe's yeah. my boy. Did he really tear his scrotum? Yeah, he's tore his scrotum, Ariel. It's Stop bad. It. Stop no, it. Yeah, it's shocking, honestly. I f- <laughs> I, he FaceTimed me yesterday and I was like, wow, that's bad. Yeah, how'd he do it? 
he, he, his arsehole like FaceTimed me and his scrotum was tall. Oh. I was like, wow. I was like, that's a bad tear, <clears throat> that mate. Israel Adesanya. What about him? We're, we're going through the, your airing of grievances. Oh, Israel. Uh, what annoys you about him right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, I've got, you know what? I've got a few videos there I'll tweet after this to show you. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, man. man. I'm, I'm always prepared for every single one of these fools. Okay, but you don't want to share anything now. I mean, some are saying right now, by the way, uh, Darren, that this is the greatest interview I've ever conducted. And you know what's the shame in all of it? It's going to disappear when we turn this off. Does It'll it disappear, be... really? It just that goes is away. It's such a shame because I have enjoyed this so much. It's such a shame. Well, we wasted it on Twitter spaces. How could we do this? I didn't know what it was. I li you know what I do with Twitter, don't you, Nero? You know, I just delete it yeah. all the time. I'm not <laughs> on it. I, th I think it's the most toxic out of all the socials. Yeah. So I, d I delete it because I think it's one of them things you'll go on it and I think it'll eat away at you. So I came on it and I seen you was in like purple with uh, yeah. Mark Baldy Ed Raimondi, is it? Yeah. And I thought, what's this? Clicked on it and it was like, it said, put your mic on. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll have some of this, my boy Ariel, come on. <laughs> and Mark not bad. He, you know, he's losing his ear, but we like him. I know, I know. I mean, five foot three at best, maybe four on oh, a good can day. You, can, you, can you see who's listening? Oh, oh yeah, great. you see how many people are here? Oh my god, Aaron, he's a he's a journal. He's a nice guy, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron's just been he's just been uh, stalking us, lurking, as they yeah. say. He's all right, Aaron. I don't mind him. Uh, oh, there's a few blue ticks in here. Yes, boys. Yeah. <laughs> there's a few lads in here. Well, it's all lads. Where's the women? I it's a, yeah, there, there's no. Uh, oh, yeah, no I women. think I think Mark wants to defend his honor. Mark. Oh, hang on. There's a raw dog listener in here. My guy. My G. Who's that? Oh, it's gone off. Um, I wanted to ask you about another guy. Uh, is he back in? No, he's not back in. Um, Jan Blachowicz. Uh, fucking hell, man. Wow. Just, just got a guy there that just wasn't scared of Israel is striking. And it, it just was like... Because he wasn't scared, he was able to just power through the fight. This is the thing, man. Like, striking fluidity, whatever it's called, you know, like me, Israel, Whitaker, these guys, it doesn't always work. Sometimes you just get a guy like Johnny who's just like, fuck this shit, I will kill you. And he does. Oh, Mark is here, Mark. Mark, what, what, what's going on here, gentlemen? What's what's happening? <laughs> Listen, I'm man, my hair. I'm five foot three. Yeah, you know, how how, how big are you? Five foot eight. I I I wish I was five foot eight. That'd be great. That'd be awesome if I was. What are you? Five foot six. Five foot six. Yeah. What is that? Okay, so every time a guy seventy centimeters small, and uh... no, every time a guy say, who's who's small says is 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 his uh, height, you have to take it off. So you're about five foot four. Is that right? No, that's that's, that's incorrect. <laughs> I'm listen. Man. I, I I play I play it straight, Darren. I'm, I know uh... you're upset over the hair joke. Now listen, <laughs> there's plenty of good places in Turkey. I will recommend some. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Look, I I've heard. I'm cool with the short jokes because that's like my thing. But this is the first time I've been insulted for losing my hair. I don't think I am. Maybe I'm going a little gray. Okay, well gray I've, here's a challenge for you. Like people love doing these challenges. Grow it out, bro. Come on, let's see what you've got. Let's see. Come on. Grow it out? It's it's pretty. I mean, during the <laughs> pandemic, it, it got it pretty long Am I there. getting mixed up now? Am I just looking at your profile picture and picture and that's your hair right now? Am I getting mixed up? I'm I'm not really sure what's happening, but I gotta say I'm a little I'm now a little worried. I mean, don't grow <laughs> it like Aaron, whatever you do. That's just it doesn't the way Aaron cuts his hair just doesn't suit Aaron. Good. <laughs> you know he's he's got a head like a baked bean, and he... <laughs> <laughs> I'm on one tonight. Hey, don't go for yeah. all the smoke. Hey, I do have a small head. I've got, I've got a you know I'm lucky. My kids didn't get my me and my wife both have small heads. My kids Adam, where have you been? We've been so talking for four yeah. hours. You've been sat there. <laughs> uh, you guys were having a compelling conversation. I'm just tuning in. We like, was. Wall, yeah, we over. was. We was. Darren, can I ask you another one? Of course. This is a good one. This is a good one. Dan Hardy. Wow. Do you know what, Ariel? Honestly, right? I'm proper upset because I think Dan's a proper sound guy. 
Uh, the Herb Dean argument he had, I actually haven't seen that video or what happened with that. Like, uh, I know it was nothing to do with that. What I'm saying is, obviously, that was recently. I wasn't really interested what happened. Like, I know Dana came out and was like, you don't argue with the judges or officials, so which is fair to use, do you know what I mean? He's got a fair point there. You can't undermine the judges or officials. But I don't know what's happened with Dan. Like, did he say he's had an argument? Like, a, a female uh, colleague, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. A UFC uh, staff member. Staff, so she's a member of staff? Mm-hmm. Mm, I don't I don't know, man. Uh, do you like him as a as an analyst? I, I like Dan as a person. Like, genuinely, Dan is very genuine. Uh, but as an analyst as well, like, I feel like every time he analyzes big fights, he always gets the money. So, that's a fucking guy you need. But, who knows? what? I mean, what, what, what kind of arguments has it been? Has it been, like, a, a, a verbal one? Have, have they, like, really screamed at each other? You just don't know. So, it's tough. Um, uh, it's, as, he must still be in contract, though, with the UFC for the fights. I don't know. No, 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 no more. He said no more. Really? Yeah. I but he said Dan, he's talking to other promotions. So yeah, I think Dan can really, like, he can blossom in any promotion. He's he's got that what what's needed, like the analyst, the commentary. But it's just sad to see him go from UFC. He was really good with a uh, my good friend John Gooden. So it's sad. You and John tight. I like John. John comes up to the 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 UFC and BT make John chase me around Liverpool to get into <laughs> that. I blank the phone to him most of the time, but yeah, he's okay, John. Yeah, I don't mind him. I don't mind him. Oh, uh, um, I, I like a cage wars would be a natural for Dan. Um, I know it's probably not as prestigious, but the problem is they're on fight pass. So I don't yeah, but the know. The thing, the thing with cage warriors though is, is this is the thing with cage warriors. You need cage warriors because cage warriors is what brings all these talent through. Oh, of course, they, they win a belt and then they get to the UFC. So it's sort of like a a pool, you know, s- small pool, big pool. That's what you're jumping from, and they. Uh, Cage Warriors is needed, and 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 they've survived through this uh, through this pandemic. So, are you, know, you a Graham he, fan? Who's that? Graham Boylan, the uh, the head of Cage Warriors. Uh, what's there to be a fan of? He's a he's what is, does he promote it or does he own it? Uh, I th- I don't know if he actually owns it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I know, I know but I, no, like, yeah. do you like him? Do you do you? Have, I don't. Do you have I don't know. I don't, I've never. Met You're him. indifferent. I met him, I met him one time in a. When they asked me to go to the show, he he seemed okay. I don't I don't know the guy. Okay. All I know is that he's involved in cage warriors and cage warriors is, is is needed. It's it's a necessary event that brings all these talents to the UFC. So an event like that, and obviously the event up and coming that uh, my coach Colin Pro Pro Bellum. Uh, you know, did you see that crazy knockout that went viral? That was on Pro Bellum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's like obviously theirs. Uh, When's their next one? I don't know. So as I said, mate, lockdown pandemic. Who who yeah. is surviving and who's not? So them kind of shows are needed. But then like Bellator maybe for Dan. I don't know what what's PFL PFL doing. And then you got one which is just fucking amazing, savage fight after fight. Uh, I'd just love to see maybe Dan try and get back in the UFC. I think it's possible. Prior to the pandemic, what was the local scene like in England? Like, like I, I'm from Canada, as you may know, and the local scene in Canada was getting really just dry. Like there was not there's 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 a one promotion hey, here. Do you know I've got like the biggest weed farm in Canada? What do you mean by fan? What what's that? Weed weed fan or fam? Weed. Cannabis, Say it again. Cannabis oh yeah, fan. yeah. Like fan? The farm. F-A-N? Oh, farm. <laughs> yeah. Like you do? Biggest. Yeah, man. I invested in it. Wow. Yeah. 